This episode of Local Film Talk was recorded in the Green Room at Natty Green's in downtown Raleigh. Perfect for business meetings or just joining friends to watch the big game, the Green Room is the ideal place to host your next event. To learn more, contact David Crack at 919-232-2477 or email david at nattygreens.com. This is Triangle Life TV. We're watching local film talk. Uh, we're chatting with Chris Moore. Uh, Chris is a self-described, if I may say so, huge geek. Uh, I'm a geek myself. I, I like all things geeky. And uh, before we start talking about that, um, one of the things that uh, happened in the early 2000s was uh, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon started a show called Project Greenlight for, mm. I think it was Showtime or HBO. HBO. And uh, it just gave, uh, um, small filmmakers a chance a chance to maybe get their screenplay out there get it filmed and that's all filmmakers on an indie level are looking for an opportunity mm -hmm. to try yeah so they've restarted that project and uh, mm -hmm. you recently submitted for that right yeah yeah and it's it's funny because I was a huge fan of the show when it first came out uh, I have the I still have the first season on DVD and I submitted one I think maybe the second or third season I submitted and it was a horrible film I can, I can, I'm surprised, uh, you know, I'm not surprised that I didn't get in, but, um, um, but yeah, they brought it back, I think, because of digital filmmaking, the, where it is right now, there's so many people that can make films, you have the ability to make films with good quality, based Relatively on the, cheap, yeah, too. with the c consumer camera, so, um, and so they started again, it's, it's just a, before it was like a contest for a screenwriter and director, this one is just for a director, so, um, so yeah, I entered the contest, uh, it was a last minute thing, um, and one of the things that I wanted to challenge myself about is working with the guys at Beatdown Boogie, I wanted to make an action short, but it, it still has the sci-fi horror aspect to it. Right. I actually was able to do the tentacle thing for once. <laughs> uh, I have a friend that, I have a, f a friend that uh, had created a tentacle for, uh, Bill Mulligan, who created a tentacle for a, a film. And so I was like, do you still have those tentacles? It's like, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, it's, it's like a sci-fi action short. It's called um, Action on the First Date. And uh, it's about this girl that goes on a blind date with a guy, and then it sort of goes into sort of sci-fi action territory from there on. Nice. You gotta love dates that break out into a, a fight. Oh yeah. Well, and I, I think I think I've realized a lot of my films do that, to where it starts off like kind of normal, and then it goes it goes in a different direction. And Foodie was like that, where it starts off, oh, it's a quirky comedy, and it's like, oh no, now it's a horror film. <laughs> Um, uh, flushed with fear. Oh, I'm just going to the bathroom. No, you're not. Um, so, uh, yeah, and they're even disengaged and everything's normal and, you know. Um, so, uh, with this one, I had a lot of fun just doing action stuff and trying to, like, um, again, uh, influence. I saw The Raid and The Raid 2. Raid is such a good and uh, Raid 2, oh my God, has some of the most, act and, and we actually have a scene where uh, it actually stars uh, uh, Brian Lee, um, Matt Sumner, and Alina Koch from Beat Down Boogie. And uh, uh, Brian Lee, we actually got these fake hammers. So there's a part where he's going to town on Matt with these hammers. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, there's a hammer scene in Raid 2 that I'm basically, right. I basically, I ate that scene. And so There's um, also a great hammer scene in Old Boy. Oh yeah, that too, that too. And so, uh, so I really wanted to, to have uh, be a little bit more crazy with the camera work uh, based on how they do it and like things like the raid and stuff. I watched a thing on um, the, uh, the guy who directed the raid, Gareth Evans, or I can't remember his name is. Um, he did this one video where he showed how he does action and stuff. And so I tried to like, I want to, I want, I want to continue to learn as a filmmaker. I don't want to have to like be complacent and like, oh, because I think a lot of times, especially in horror, you have horror directors that once they get into their twilight years, they're like. They're just, you know, playing it by ear, and they're not really making anything cool. Um, and so that's what I want to do. Wanted to want to do with this is to have a really cool action thing that has comedy in it, has a little bit of horror, and hopefully tells a story in enough time to where people will say, "Hey, I'll vote," you know, really nice things about it, and then hopefully move to the to the next round, which would involve doing a bio about myself. But even if it doesn't make it, I love it. I think it turned out really well. And uh, I'm definitely submitted to film festivals. There's a lot of action film festivals that I could submit to. Yeah. Talking about The Raid, um, to get geek off topic, um, I like The Raid. Um, 
but I think I like its kind of sci-fi um, doppelganger, Judge Dredd, a Judge little Dredd, more. Judge Dredd, yeah. I, I, I can understand just cause that. I, just because I, I, I know the character, and I'm like, God, they really nailed the character. Well, you, you saw Judge Dredd, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, I think, um, and I think that was probably its biggest flaw when it came out is because people were like, oh, right, this yeah. is just, they're just trying to copy, you know, the raid. Um, and it and it does. I mean, honestly, it does copy the raid and its 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 form and its structure quite a bit. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm 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 just very biased to Judge Dredd. Well, but but at the same time, like if you go and watch the raid too, mm -hmm. they really changed up their styles and they made each individual like fight scene visually interesting in the areas that they shot it. You know, like the the whole hammer scene takes place on these different halls with like you know, all kinds of like, almost like red walls and stuff. And it was very much more colorful than the raid, which was merry, you know, blue. And it was much more darker and just the, the whole theme of that. Um, and I think they really changed it up somewhat. But yeah, I can totally understand that with Judge Dredd. I thought it was a, I was really sad because it really didn't do anything. And it really did a better job than the Sylvester Stallone one that just came oh, before absolutely. it. <laughs> I am the law. I am the law. <laughs> I mean, that was the most memorable thing from it. It's the, it's the throwaway. But um, so let's talk about Guardians of the Galaxy for a minute, because um, that's that's a sci-fi film that kind of follows um, what you were saying uh, along similar veins that you might want to do with your web series. Um, it's a huge gamble for a big studio to do a movie like that, and um, and I, I think it's very successful. Um, what are your thoughts on um, why the public gravi has gravitated toward that kind of sci-fi? in the way that it has. Well, you know what? Sci-fi hasn't really been as uh, as big as it used to be. You know, um, it's been bigger on like television than it has been in the movies. And so, I think we're getting back to that. I think it all comes in cycles. And I think with the new Star Wars film coming out, you can tell that Guardians of the Galaxy is influenced by that. There's, in fact, there's one scene where like he's talking to like the the hologram or whatever of of a character, and it's just it, it's the Emperor, you know, from from uh, Empire Strikes Back. So. Um, so I think uh, there's definitely influences with that, but I think also just the humor of it. I think we've, I think the problem nowadays is a lot of the films that we do are like gritty reboots of stuff, and everything's so dark and it's not fun. Guardians of the Galaxy was just fun, and it also you have like this, you have all these different interesting characters from Rocket Raccoon to Groot to um, uh, the um, uh, the. Uh, you got Drax the UFC Destroyer. Guy. Yeah, Drax the yeah. Destroyer. Um, that's a Batasta. And, and then, you um, have all these wonderful areas that made me extremely psyched to see the new Star Wars film just based on seeing this film because like when he's on the planet with all the geysers and then there's the the docking station of this celestial head of this ancient dead being I mean there's so many different things I know that are based on the comic book but just seeing them come to life and for me it's even more exciting because James Gunn directed it who I've always been a big fan of and a lot of his stuff really sort of like is the type of stuff I wouldn't mind doing you know he's a slither I think is a brilliant callback to those old you know b-movie horror films right. but it has a good he's always been good about like injecting humor into a lot of the stuff he does yeah, whether super, it's super which is definitely dark, very and, often, and, yeah, very dark yeah and gory and all that stuff and so i think a lot of the stuff that he does he sort of walks that fine line i think with guardians of the galaxy he just hit it out of the park mm -hmm. it is entertaining from beginning to end and, you're, and, you know, just everything worked well with the special effects and just the world that they've created with this, you know, these characters and stuff. And so I think it just it just hit at the perfect time. And, and hopefully it's going to create a renaissance of different films like that. And with all the new Star, films, Star Wars films that are coming out, I'm extremely excited to see these things. I, I'm feeling, I, literally feeling like a kid again. I think we're about ready to wrap up the show here. I just got the three remaining questions. Uh, we'll make these real quick. Uh, number one... Um, Who's your favorite sci-fi character of all time? Darth Vader. If you were stranded on a desert island with a uh, video game console of your choice, what video game would you would you choose to play? Uh, Xbox Halo. Xbox Halo. And, and number three, if you could turn a book or in, any kind of book into a movie, and uh, no matter what the cost of it, of it would be, what would be that book? There's a, uh, a books that I read as a, a kid called The Three Investigators, and it, it's about these three kids that um, that are like it's almost like I guess Scooby Doo to some degree. They have they have this secret hideout in this trash heap, and 
Um, they're, they're always you know, unmasking, you know, some evil villain who's trying to make like a dragon or, yeah, yeah. So it's that's something that if I ever had the money, I would make that because it was just made such a big impression on me. And plus, I think it, it has the fantasy aspect of it, but at the same time, um, uh, it's something from my youth that I would love to make for a whole new generation. Cool. Well, thanks for talking with us, Chris. Well, I appreciate it.